Hello everyone and happy World Book Day. For today's activity, we're going online to create a word cloud picture using the website wordart.com. It's free to create your word cloud picture and you can save any pictures that you create so you can use them again in any other projects. So let's get started. First step is to open your internet browser and go to the website wordart.com. Here you will see the start page for creating your word cloud pictures. Click the Create Now button. The WordArt web page is split in two halves. On the left hand side we have all the options for creating our word cloud picture and on the right hand side we have a preview pane where we will see our word cloud as we create it. The first step is to add all the words that you would like to include in your word cloud picture. On the left hand side in the words menu there are three sample words that we will remove before we type our own list of words. To remove a word, click in the word, then click the cross that appears at the end of its box. We're now ready to type our own list of words. Because it's World Book Day, I'm going to add some of our favourite junior authors here at Murray Libraries. When you've typed your first word or words, just press the enter key to move to the next line. I hope as I'm typing this list of authors that you can see some of your favourites appearing. We have so many great authors that I could add, but I'm going to stop there so we can get on with creating our word cloud picture. So now we're ready to get the first look at our word cloud. On the right hand side, click on the red visualize button. Your word cloud picture will now be created. Can you see on my word cloud that JK Rowling's name is the largest? That's because she appears at the top of my typed list of words. The words get smaller as you go down the list. You can change the position of a word on the list using the up and down arrows. So if at the moment David Williams is my favourite author, I can click in his name and use the up arrow to move him to the top of my list. When I then click the visualise button, the new cloud will appear and his name should be the largest and there he goes. The next step is to choose a shape that you are going to fill with your words. On the left hand side, click on the shapes menu. You will then see a list of categories for all the shapes that are available. For example, if I click on the birthday category, I'll see shapes like a balloon and a birthday gift. To use a shape, click once to select it, then click the visualise button. The new word cloud will then be created. Because we love our junior book authors at Murray Libraries, I'm going to choose the hearts category and I'm going to choose the first red heart shape. When I visualise, my heart word cloud will be created. The next step is to choose the font for your words. On the fonts menu, you will see an alphabetical list of all the available font types. Scroll until you see a font that you would like to use click to select it and then visualise. The 
Now that we've chosen our font, we need to choose the layout for our words. The layout I have at the moment is horizontal, so all the words are going straight across within the heart shape. If you choose another option like random, the words will appear in all different directions. I'm going to go back to the horizontal option because it's nice and easy for me to read. The last menu down the left hand side is the style menu. There are lots of changes that can be made in this menu, but I'm only going to look at one today, which is the background image slider. When I chose my heart shape, it was filled with a red colour. And this slider allows me to choose how much of that red background colour I would like to show. The higher up the slider I go, the more red background colour shows. I'm going to go back to the lower end of the slider so that the background colour is pale. So my heart word cloud is looking fantastic, but I would have liked it to have been a little bit more colourful. Perhaps some of the words to be different colours or different fonts. So for my last step, I'm going to go back to the words menu on the left hand side. Here you will see that for each word, there's the option to change the colour. I'm going to leave David Williams with the default red colour, but I'm going to change the colour for each of the other authors on the list. To change the colour, click in the colour box and a colour palette will appear. Choose a colour from the bottom colour blocks and then if you wish, Use the shades panel at the top to make the colour a bit lighter or a bit darker. When you're happy with the colour, click apply. All occurrences of that word will then change to the new colour. I'm going to continue changing the colours for the rest of my authors. For Eric Carl, I'm going to choose a nice caterpillar green. And for Julia Donaldson, I'm going to choose Gruffalo Brown. That's looking much more colourful now. To change the font for any of your words, just click in the font box and choose from the list of available fonts. I'll just change a couple of fonts on this list and then click the visualise to see the fonts change. OK, I'm really happy with my word cloud picture now, so it's time to download it. Near the top of the screen, click the download button and then choose the standard JPEG file type. The download bar will then appear near the bottom of the screen. Click on the save option. Your word cloud picture will now be downloaded to your device. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to create a word cloud picture today. Now it's your turn to go and have some fun creating your own word cloud pictures. Good luck.